When back in August, Elon Musk and Ashok Eliswamy did a version 12 software full self-driving demo drive, they demonstrated exactly why end-to-end -end networks are so amazing, but they inadvertently also demonstrated what might be its Achilles heel. Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I want to start by saying this is a concern of mine, not a concern of anybody that anybody else has expressed, especially from Tesla. So this is just something I've been thinking about and it's kind of based on logic and reason, but I have no inside information about Tesla. And of course, it's a group of very smart people, so they might already have ways of counteracting the problem that I'm going to talk about today. So first of all, really, really quickly, the, the big difference between end-to-end -end neural networks and what would be traditional code or heuristics is that traditional code or heuristics requires explicit code. So again, simple sort of thing would be like, if stop sign, then stop. And that seems very, very simple. That's heuristics. The problem is that when you deal with reality, all it is is, is exceptions. First of all, how do you even recognize what a stop sign is with heuristic code? That's really, really difficult to do. But even assuming that you have that information, there are so many stop unless you see this, unless you see this, unless you do this, this kind of thing, right? So all it is is just a list of exceptions and the heuristic code bloats and becomes very, very big and very inefficient. And you really just can never quite capture all of reality. When you're doing something real world with heuristic code, it just is basically impossible. So neural networks and specifically end-to-end -end neural networks have big advantages to this. Number one, they can learn very complex, very fuzzy, very noisy sorts of things like what do you do at a stop sign and even you know, backing that up a step, how do you even recognize that you're at a stop sign? Essentially, we humans don't need to know the code to make it happen. We just build the neural network architecture and throw data at it and let it train. Also, as has been proven mathematically by people who are way smarter than me, you can theoretically learn any function with a neural network that's complicated enough. Now, in practice and reality, of course you can't learn any any function because it would just take like the age of the universe to do that, but at least in theory you can learn to emulate or very very closely approximate any function that's out there. And of course, that includes driving in the real world. So that would be one of those functions. It's a very very complicated function. Nobody knows exactly what the function looks like, which is why you throw neural networks at it. And finally, neural networks can actually run more efficiently than bloated heuristic code at inference time. In other words, at runtime Time. So the thing that sits on the computer in your car can actually run more quickly, and this has been demonstrated in the in the drives and the statistics that we've heard. These cars can drive more efficiently on neural network code than they can with heuristic code, and that's because heuristic code might be 10 million lines of code or something, whereas the neural network architecture might only be on the order of a couple hundred thousand lines of code, or potentially even smaller than that, although it's a little difficult to match that up. It's not apples to apples because it's not exactly code. It's like an architecture that's defined in code and then a really, really big database of numbers. So it's not exactly the same thing, but the effect of it is that good neural network architecture that's been trained well can actually run at inference time faster and more efficiently than bloated heuristic code. More on that in a minute, but first, if you've been looking over my shoulders at these awesome posters and wishing you could have some of your own, you're in luck. Displate, the sponsor of today's video, creates unique metal posters you can mount on your wall in just 20 seconds with with no power tools. How is this possible? With magnets. Simply stick the paint protecting sheet on the wall and then attach the powerful magnets to these sheets and any displayed poster will pop right onto them like magic. And with the magnetic attachments, you can swap out displayed posters in seconds so you can change posters depending on season or even your mood. Even better for someone with all thumbs like me, you can adjust the angle of the poster super simply. I really love these bright metal posters and with my discount, they're less expensive than cheap cheap paper or canvas posters. And with so many awesome display posters to choose from, you're sure to find one or many posters that are perfect for any room or any occasion. As a Halloween special, you can save up to 38% on display posters, but be sure to order soon as this deal won't last. Whether you love fine art or nature or maps or superheroes or seasonally themed or even Tesla themed posters, Displate has them all for you. Be sure to use my link in the description and for today only get up to 38% off all designs, excluding limited editions and luminous. Thanks again to Displate for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to check out my link in the description and now let's get back to it. So those are the advantages. What are the disadvantages? The first one is you need so much data. What you're doing is replacing the human you know, knowledge 
knowledge, our heuristics, the thing that we're putting into the code going like, I know what a stop sign is. I know what you're supposed to do around a stop sign. You're replacing that with thousands or millions or tens of millions of examples of people driving around stop signs or simulated versions of that. So it requires tons and tons of data. We all know that already. Number two, you actually do need to know what the right architecture is. And so I just sort of glibly said that in the advantages part that you just get the architecture and then you let it train. But to discover what that architecture is, what the correct neural network architecture is, can be a very, very complicated and difficult problem. And we don't know right now whether we've discovered the correct architecture for full self-driving or not. The third disadvantage is that the training and compute time can be massive for neural networks. So heuristic code, if you write it up somehow magically, you just type it all up, it just runs, you're done. That's all you have to do. The code is there, you debug it or something like that and it's finished. But with neural networks, you can create these, you know, multi hundreds of millions of dollar data clusters that then have to ingest all all of this data and they have to run for weeks or months or something in order to get the training done. That's a whole different thing than doing it with heuristic code. And that's a really big disadvantage. It takes a lot of time and a lot of compute power to get to the point where you actually have a neural network architecture that works as well as a human being. Okay, so if you've been paying attention to this space, you've already heard the first three of these disadvantages. The last one is again, what I'm saying might be the Achilles heel of these end-to-end -end networks. And that is, its ability to learn something very specific. So that seems really weird, probably. You're probably thinking like, wait, it's really easy to learn very specific things. Again, thinking from heuristic code, it's like if you have a specific exception when somebody has a stop sign, but they're holding it down, so it's like a road worker or something, that becomes an if then. Like if stop sign is upside down in human hand, then don't stop, proceed slowly or something, right? So that would be kind of some very, very high level pseudo code. The problem is how do you teach an end-to-end and neural network that very, very same thing. You can't just tell it that. You can't say if then, that's not the way these things work. These things only work through example. So while learning to emulate the crazy complex function that is driving in the real world is definitely something that a deep neural network is going to have advantages at, trying to teach it to do one specific thing is very, very complicated. So while thinking about that, let's turn to a couple of recent posts from Ashok Eloswamy talking about end-to-end -end neural networks and their advantages. From September 23rd, and 24th, you can see Tesla Optimus posted, Optimus can now sort objects autonomously. Its neural network is trained fully end-to-end, -end, video in, controls out. To which Ashok responded, neural networks plus cameras work amazingly well and are really the solution to robotics. Same solution for the car, for Optimus, and will be for all such artificial animals. Now, if you're interested in more details about that sorting video, you can check out this video here that I did previously. And then if we look back to August 26th, right after they did the demo drive with version 12 of full self-driving, Ashok said, this end-to-end -end neural network approach will result in the safest, the most competent, the most comfortable, the most efficient, and overall the best self-driving system ever produced. It's going to be very hard to beat it with anything else. And just after that, he also noted, and it took a tremendous amount of high quality data from the fleet, which is us, a very large amount of compute and a world-class engineering team to get to this point. So you can see from this post that Ashok mentioned specifically lots and lots of data that I noted. Also the need to have very, very highly qualified engineers to figure out the correct architecture and the data pipeline and all that other stuff. And then the massive training and compute needs needed to get an end-to-end -end neural network functioning properly. But you probably also noticed that Ashok did not mention the very specific thing that I'm talking about, which is learning specifics. And if we go back to that test drive that he and Elon made on August 25th, you'll see that for 45 minutes, for 44 minutes and, and 50 seconds or something out of the 45 minute video, the car drove exceptionally well, but there was one place where it failed and that was that a left turn, like arrow that was red turned green and the car thought it was able to go straight on that green arrow, whereas only the people in the left turn lane would be able to go on that circumstance. Like I said, this is it's a little slow because uh, we're driving around in basically rush hour. Oh, oh, oh intervention. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay.
And that's exactly the kind of specific thing that it's really difficult to train one of these networks to do. So of course, as they were doing the demo drive, they spoke about this and they said, oh, we're gonna have to give it a lot of training examples and teach it how to deal with this specific circumstance. And that's basically the way you do it with these big N10 networks is you throw a ton of data at it and you let it compute and compute and compute and train itself to refine all of those little numbers that it uses to figure out how to do the driving. And maybe, you know, three or four decimal places down, it fixes some weights and things like that. And it figures out how to do that specific maneuver and not actually go when the left turn arrow, you know, lights green when you're going straight. But of course, what you can't do in this circumstance is you can't tell it specifically not to do that. You can, you know, this is something different with a human being. With a human, you could say to a student driver, you could say like, oh, don't do that, right? <laughs> you know, so there's the experiential aspect, but also there's a kind of reasoning aspect that a human being has where you can communicate with them and say that is not the appropriate response to this circumstance. And so for a human, it makes it a relatively simple process. You start to make a mistake. The person in the car with you corrects that mistake and you reason it. You, you know, create a rational like set of circumstances, a kind of a quasi heuristic inside your head that's like if in go straight lane and left turn arrow turns green, don't move. That kind of a thing. You can do that as a human, but it's really not easy to make that happen with an end to end neural network. And that is a really big problem with this. But of course you can say like, okay, we'll just throw a bunch of data at that and that's going to fix it. But the really weird thing about deep neural networks is that by fixing that problem, you never know some other completely random problem like it driving the right speed limit or it merging properly on a highway or something, something that seems completely unrelated to this issue could get broken. Because what you're doing is you're changing all of these weights. All these things are at heart is gigantic spreadsheets of numbers. And if you start tweaking those numbers, you never know, it might solve this particular problem, but create another problem in a whole different area that you don't even see. It could pop up later on and in a weird circumstance. And so you don't even really understand that the two things are connected to each other. You just know that when you did the latest training run, it figured out how not to go through a green left arrow when you're going straight, but then merging on the highway broke or something along those lines. So the fact that these neural networks are pretty much black boxes where it's really difficult to get a sense of exactly what's going on inside them, combined with the fact that it's really difficult to teach them how to do very, very specific things is a significant drawback to end-to-end -end neural networks. So of course, one solution to this problem is to add some guardrails around the outside of the neural network code and you know, sort of make sure it's not doing anything stupid. But then what you're doing is you're adding heuristic code back into the mix and that's, you know, recreating the problems that you had originally, which was that you can't write heuristic code that's adequate enough to model all of reality. And so then you get stuck back again with the, you know, the neural network gives you an output and then the heuristic code has to make a decision based on that output. And that decision requires a lot of if thens, error correction, trapping, all of that kind of stuff that happens, which gets you right back to the problem of heuristic code and can also make the code bloated and run slower. The other problem and what it sounds like Tesla is doing Doing is that they are throwing a lot of data at the problem and they are hoping that they can get it to work properly in that circumstance without breaking something else. And then of course there is probably option three, but I'm not smart enough to know what that is. Hopefully the people at Tesla are smart enough and they've already figured out some ways of fudging this kind of a thing. Maybe they can freeze part of the network and only train specific parts of it. Maybe they have that hydronet that they were talking about before, which has a big trunk with a bunch of heads. And so they can just go to the left turn slash go straight head of the hydronet and they could just change that and freeze everything else and keep it all the same. So, you know, there may be clever tricks that they can play in order to overcome this. And that's why I said, this is just totally me thinking about this, not having any real evidence about it, but just worrying about the fact that this is a significant problem with deep neural networks and in particular end to end neural networks where you take photons in and you get control decisions out. So will Tesla solve this problem? I think that they will, but it also is a valid concern, I think. And Hopefully at some point when we get AI day number three, which I think I've heard might be in early 2024 at this point, hopefully we will hear more information about that and some, some you know, very specific nuggets about how they are dealing with 
specificity. The specificity problem is the problem. It's not the general solution. It does really well with that already. It's the weird specific edge cases and corner cases. And some of them aren't even really edge cases or corner cases. They're just normal cases that it's broken at. And it's really, really hard to fix that. I know a ton of people are bothered by the wiper situation, for example, and the turn arrows, the indicators popping on saying that it's going to turn left and right just randomly. That really bugs a lot of people. But part of the problem here is in order to fix that, you have to throw a bunch of data at it which could then potentially break something else. Those aren't really safety critical issues. And so I'm sure Tesla just isn't devoting a ton of time to that. And by the way, I, I wore this and I forgot to talk about this earlier, but I have this FSD beta tester shirt. This is available in the merch store and also FSD beta toughest critic is also in there if you want it and a ton of other merch. So you should definitely pick that out if you are a beta tester and you want to like represent for beta testers. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it fun and interesting and thought provoking. I really would like to know what you all think about this especially if you have experience in this area, uh, whether it's traditional coding or neural network coding, it would be really interesting to hear your thoughts on this as well. I might be missing something obvious that makes this not a really big problem, but I don't think I am. So anyway, definitely let me know in the comments. And while you're down there, please do like the video so other people can find it. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my Patreon patrons, my YouTube channel members, and of course, my ex subscribers. Thank you all so much for your support. And if you want to join any of the teams, just check out the links in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have Tesla bot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And finally, a big thanks once again to Displate for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to check out my link in the description, get your Halloween special, and get up to 38% off your Displate order. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.